Right, so I've been bodging this thing back for the last several years and finally decided it's time to put a new torch on the welder. So, as with all good YouTube videos, here's an unboxing very quickly. The thing, and another thing, and this thing, and this thing, and the thing I actually want, and all the other stuff that goes with it. Right, we need to get into here. And unplug it before you clean it. Now we're in, uh, we need to remove the old torch hose lead sleeve thing. Uh, we need to remove the gas line, snip the wires because we're not going to need those. Uh, I always like to try and snip with an extra bit of length. One thing I should point out is the connector on the, the big connector on the end of the large wire you do need and you need it to reach back to the wire feed so you need to make sure you cut that with a suitable amount of length that you can meet the two connection points. Now I've got all that out of the way, it's time to start looking at fitting new parts. So this thing goes in first. It's the socket for the other end of the torch. Because this is a generic kit, the thread is too long. Mark it down to where it fits. Put a nut on it so you can remake the thread after you've cut it. And take the nut off. I mean, you shouldn't have any issues putting nuts on or off later. Right, this thing's got to go there. Had to manually file this bit, couldn't reach with anything else so sensibly. Do the marker thing, and cut this thing down to the right length. Mark a hole for the top bolt to go through. Some people put a little reinforcement plate on this as well. I didn't, and I would recommend it because it, the whole thing is a little bit flexible after putting on. The casing for this world is quite thin. But hindsight is a wonderful thing. All right, trial fit, make sure everything lines up. Again, there's a lot of putting this in and out. Mark the holes, take the whole thing off again, drill the holes, make sure you miss your fingers. So this needs to sit slightly within the casing hole, and so some filing is required. This little bit, I forgot the film, but you need a slot underneath the big hole uh, to put in the main cable. Right, that goes in there, and the other two go in as well. I'd like to say this is the last time I put it on, but it wasn't. Clean everything off. Push this through. Found a sharpie was the best way to get that to the right point. just to make sure I put the torch in as well and that just ensures that that little brass liner tube thing is in exactly the right place. Uh, I didn't have a solder ring iron big enough to do solder get this wire hot enough quick enough uh, so the cable insulation took a little bit of damage from this. 
Also, even though I'm using plumber's soda, it's basically the same stuff. And I did pre-flux everything first. And more soda. Still squeezing as much soda in as I could before it all dribbled out. After this, I also put heat shrink on it over the joint just to help hold it all in as well. Didn't film it for some reason. This little slot had sharp edges, so I used a little cable protector jobby, and it goes on the end here. And this is why you made sure that thread was nice and clean earlier. Then it's down to feeding the wires and the hose onto the other side of the welder. This little loop is so that you can put the cover back onto the feed mechanism. I won't need to grind that little bit out to make space for the washers and then hex nut shaft thing of the wire feed. on the side. Right. Those two wires we cut earlier join onto these two white and blue ones. Uh, they are the wires for the switch in the in the torch head which then activates the wire feed. Next we're putting on the gas solenoid. The previous one didn't have this, it had some valve thing in the handle that never worked. Oh, it probably did work at some point before I melted everything in it. But anyway, this one came with a solenoid valve. How's it going at an angle so it misses the fan? Put the hose on before you bolt it to the case. Now I find cable ties are perfectly adequate to hold pipes like this on. It's not like it's under any real amount of pressure. The solenoid valve comes with an earth lead and the welder case has an earth post, so those two marry up quite well. Right, on here I found a whole load of different instructions for various Clark welders, which terminals to connect the switches for the solenoid valve. I ended up using J1 and J2. Um, the ones recommended for this welder I found on forums elsewhere were wrong. Can't remember what they were, but they didn't work initially. But because I use these little jumper connector things, the, it was quite easy to change when I did it. As you can see, it's all off again because I had issues trying to get the right terminals for it to work. And a bit of cable management, tidy all the cables up, make sure there's nothing in the way, clipping on the anything. And we put it all back together again. I may have even cleaned it more, but it's unlikely. Right, that's that bit back together.
to it. So I had some of this Clark gas left over. Um, I'm going to upgrade it to the bigger bottle later. But first I'm going to finish using these bottles I've already got. So insulation tape helps make the pipe diameters match. And a couple of extra cable ties with the ends opposing each other should make it reasonably gas tight. And moment of truth. If you want to see what I've been up to over the last week, every week, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I try and have a wide, varied array of making content, from metalwork to woodwork, or anything in between. Hope to see you next time.